Hey guys, this is Karan. I live in Saudi Arabia, study 9th grade in Yamu International School. Now, I've done a lot of tutorials on physics, pre-calculus, mental math, and you can check out all this video for free at www.youtube.com slash M-O-D-I-K-A-R-A-N, okay? This is the link where you can check out my playlist and watch all those videos just for no money, for free. Now, let's go back to our topic, and this topic, in this section, we'll be talking about tort, okay? Now, let's take a preview of what we already know. Well, we know force, distance, and acceleration, okay? Now, this is what we were talking about in my previous videos. So, these three things can be related to linear motion, which I talked to you, okay? And these three things can also be rotate, uh, related to rotational motion. Now, there's one more thing that involves, that adds up only for rotational motion. Well, you might have guessed it, it's torque, okay? Now, this section I'll be talking about torque, okay, and tell you how it is related in mathematics and, of course, solve some examples, okay? Before we get started, torque is, all we are going to do is talk on torque and simply be, be, uh, build our concept on torque, okay? So, now we'll start talking about torque, okay? It is related to rotational motion, like I told you a moment ago, in, in which we're trying to find the force that happens to be moving in circular motion, okay? So, you might have guessed it, that we can find the force of an object, okay? Force that is being applied uh, to an object, but there's a condition. It has to be moving in a circular motion, okay? That is the reason we apply only torque, to rotational motion not linear motion because linear motion is basically you do to, to find the force distance or acceleration that happens to be moving in a straight pathway okay now say imagine you're trying uh, imagine your doorknob all we do is push on the doorknob so you got you guys can see it happens to be moving in some uh, distance okay it it remains that distance because if you were to push it all day Okay, you can imagine, you can make a circle out of it, okay? Now, if, let's go ahead and let me draw the doorknob. Okay, I'm going to try my best to draw the doorknob. Okay, now... Now, this is basically the doorknob. Okay, now this happens to be moving in a circle and it keeps its distance, right? You, I know you can only push it to some distance over here, but imagine if you were to pull it round, okay, you can move it in a circle. So, we can call this since it's moving in a circle we can call this distance as a radius, right? And we, remember, we are pulling the fo now in door doorknob, we're pushing the force, right? But it turns out that we can also pull the force, okay? We can pull it upwards and go reverse, or we can pull it downwards and go like this, counterclockwise and clockwise, okay? So this force has to be perpendicular to the radius, okay? Perpendicular to the force. Now, you can find the torque like this. Torque. And this is a Greek letter known as, it's known as tau. Okay? Now, to find torque, you all you do is combine radius times force. Okay? So, there, it's really easy to remember torque because since it's really written is T, basically T. So now there isn't a case where the force is always perpendicular to the radius. There's some cases like in kinetic, uh, like in kinetic energy or work. Let me give you an example of work, okay? Now if you were to find the example of work like this, this is an object. And we know the work of an object is basically the distance it moves times the force, right? But 
force has to be per in direction it's moving, okay? In this case, since if it's moving in this direction, the force has to be in this. But the, fo the force isn't always in this. It could be in this way also, which is vertical force. Now, how do we calculate that? Where we use cosine and trigonometric ratios. So, you guys might have guessed, we are going to use trigonometric ratios to find the torque as well. Okay? If, in particular case where the force is not perpendicular to the radius. Okay? Now, the radius, let me say it again, is the distance of, of the object you are pushing the force on or applying the force on. Okay? Now, the radius doesn't change this because of course, the object does not is not going to move, changes, decrease or increase its distance. Now, what changes is the force and the torque. Okay, all it depends on the force and the torque. So, let's go ahead and solve an example. If the if the force was vertical up here, okay. Now, if the force was vertical, we just take the components. Okay, for here, I'm going to use the components over here. So. components of this would be sine, okay, so torque is equal to radius times force, which is basically the same, we don't change that, but what we apply is sine, and there is one more thing, because this has some kind of angle to it, it's known as theta, so we just put theta over here, and we built a new equation for torque, now, there's also a case where the force is straight to the radius. Well, if it's straight to the radius, it might look like this. Okay, now if the force was straight, it might look like this. Okay, now if this were straight and if this were moving in a circle, it, we would guess that it would be happened in 90 degrees. Now, since we're using sine as our trigonometric ratio, we can say sine of 90 is basically 1 okay so so sine of 90 is equal to 1 so now if there is a force that is applying the straight towards the uh, radius which is basically the length of the object okay which you're trying to move in a circular pathway so if it were a sine of 90 all it basically depends is the distance of that object because anything num and any number multiplied by one is basically that number and you guess what you just found the torque so this is basically the three important things that I want you guys to remember and sine of 90 to be one okay now knowing this piece of information let's go ahead and solve some examples okay now before going on to the example okay I would like you to know that if you ever try like uh, moving an object in a circular motion, I would like you to pause this video and think what did you push or pull on or what did you apply the force on to move in a circular pathway. Well, if you ever have done to pull or apply force to an object moving in a circular motion, we can, from experience, we can say that the longer the object is, the more amount of torque is being produced because the more the distance is and you multiply by force you get more amount of torque now that's basically simple because now you have equation to solve it okay now let's go on to the equation okay now the example would be up on your board up on the board now the example says that the torque is required to move an object steadily at 60 newton per meter okay what is the force required if the length of the object that is moving in rotational motion is 300 centimeter okay now let's go ahead and draw the diagram okay now there's something in this example I'm just gonna use my door now okay this example doesn't say what it is but there's some object okay that moves in a circle okay and the distance claims okay it says the distance is 300 centimeter okay what we don't know is the force okay we don't know the force okay but we do know the torque so the torque among this object okay torque is equal to 
60 Newton times meter. Okay, now there is a reason why torque is Newton times meter. I'm just going to show you how and why is it Newton times meter. Well, the force that is calculated is always in Newtons. And the, me, uh, and the distance which is calculated is always in meters. And remember, this is in centimeters, so what we do is convert the units first. So the first thing you ever do is check the units, okay? First thing you do is check the units, then if you know that units are right, check over it again, because after you're checking it, don't ever check it again, because you already approved that the units are basically correct. So now what you do is recall the formula, which is basically torque is equal to radius times force, okay? Now you use that formula and basically switch the units, okay? By switching the units, you put distance to be 300 meters, okay? Now this isn't 300 meters because I'm just, uh, this is in centimeters. Now for example, if this was some meters, you put some amount of meter into distance and some amount of force into force to find the torque, okay? Now let's go ahead for the first sample. Well, check our units. Well, Newton is in given, torque is in right units. Well, oh, the distance is in, in meter because the SI unit for distance is always in meter. That is the reason why we need to convert centimeters into meters. So let's go ahead and convert 300 centimeters into meters. So basically you write the thing that you already start, no, is 300 centimeters. Now what we are trying to convert to is meters. Well, we do know that 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. Alright? So what happens is centimeters and centimeter cancels out. Okay? Now what do you do? 300 times 1 divided by 1. Well, gee, it's 300 divided by 100, 300 divided by 100, which basically gives us 3 meter. Okay, now we check our units. This is perfect, this is perfect, which we don't know. Okay, now you go ahead and write the equation up. Okay, now we do know the torque is equal to radius times force. Okay, torque we know is 60, and that is Newton times meter. Okay, radius we know, which we just found out, is 3 meters. Okay, now force is we don't know, so I'm just going to put it as XF. And I'm putting F because force is always in Newtons, okay? So this tells me that I'm ca this is the force that I'm going to calculate, okay? So what you do is divide both sides by 3. Divide both sides by 3. Okay? Now, 3 meters. We always write our units. Okay? Meters, meter cancels out. 3, 3 cancels out. Okay? Now you have meter, meter. You cancel the meter, meter. You always check for the units. And 60 divided by 3, which basically we get to be 20. So, you have, well, meter got cut off. So, we have 20 newtons and the force we get that is being acted on some object okay to move it move, move, uh, to move it constantly at steady speed we need the force to be 20 newtons this is the, uh, our answer okay so let's go on move on to our next example and if you follow the steps which I just told you, it would be a lot of easy, okay? It would be easy for you guys to understand the problem, okay? And solve for it. So you don't ever have to go back and check for your units or anything like that. Okay? Now our next example you might, have, uh, you might see on the board, okay? Now some amount of torque is required to move the wrench to add 20 newtons okay of force is acting on the wrench okay and the approximately length of the wrench is 9 meter long what is the torque of wrench okay now let's go ahead and draw the wrench now I'll try my best to draw the wrench so this is the wrench over here and it says 
that approximately the length of the branch is 9 meter long. Okay? And the force that we are applying is 20 newton. Okay? Now it's easy to go because we check our units. This is in newtons because this is the force. This is in meters. That's the distance. So all we do is use the formula. Now, what, let me go what I just told you. You replace the units. Remember I told you that? Now, look over here. You don't know the torque, so we just write torque. Now, radius, we have to be 9, nine meters. Force is to be 20, so you just replace the units. Okay? Now, if you do this, you would be getting your answer to be 180. That is newtons times meter. So, torque is equal to newton times meter. You just found out the torque of the wrench, okay? That is, that has a length of approximately 9 meters. Since it says it's approximately, you don't write torque is equal to because we don't know the exact distance so we just write torque is approximately this much okay now I hope you like this video um, it helped you on, on understanding your skills on torque thank you for watching